topic is paraphrase quote cite, um, getting it right. And paraphrasing, quoting, and citing is something that you'll have to do a lot and you have to do a lot in academic writing. And so I want to give you some tips to help you along the way. My name is Kirsten Gackel and I'm originally from the Seattle area. I work um, as a translator, an instructor, and a writing consultant for the university. And I teach writing workshops and other English language workshops um, for the academic lab. And I also offer writing consultations for students. So if you're interested in either a workshop or a consultation, please get in touch. So we'll look first at some definitions, and then we'll look at why and how and when and how, to paraphrase quote site. So paraphrasing is to restate something in your own words. It's different from summarizing because you're not condensing, making the content shorter, you're simply saying it in your own words. Quoting is to use the exact words that someone else used and making sure um, to have quotation marks. And then citing is when you include the reference there, so we know where the ideas came from. And you need to cite no matter if you paraphrase or if you quote, um, because it needs to be clear to your reader which ideas come from you and which ideas come from another scholar or another writer. Um, it's often said that in a paper, you'll want to have two thirds of the paper be your own ideas and a third be the ideas of other scholars from your field. Because when you're writing, you're entering into that academic conversation. You're responding to what arguments are out there. You're taking a side, you're engaging in argumentative writing. So now let's look at the tips. Um, we want to paraphrase because we want to keep as much of your writing in your own words as possible, and it's a way for you to show that you've understood what you've read. But sometimes people ask, well, how? How do I change? How do I paraphrase and write in my own words? So here's some things that you can change. You can change a word from one part of speech to another. For example, um, a, nom, a noun to a verb. You can use find synonyms. You can change numbers and percentages to different forms. So if it's written out in the original text, for example, 26%, well, you could say approximately one quarter or a little more than one quarter and write it out in words. You could, might change the word order. You could also use um, parentheses for something that wasn't in parentheses in the original or vice versa. And you can use different attribution signals. So it might say in the original article, um, Smith stated, and then you could say, according to Smith, so using a different type of construction. Um, and then the last thing that you might want to change is connecting words. So if in the original article it says, however, it's still a contrast, you might say, but. Uh, one caution, when you're paraphrasing, you don't want to change key terms or proper nouns. Um, if you use too many synonyms for key terms, your reader will get confused. And proper nouns are just proper nouns. For example, Universität Leipzig, if you go to the website, it's called Leipzig University, and that's the only thing it's called in English. Okay, so here's a sample paraphrase, and the original version is at the top, and the paraphrase version is below. And you, we can just look at the colors here and see the changes that have been made. So first of all, the green is the word order. In Europe, it's now at the beginning of the sentence instead of the end, like in the original. The red shows change of um, changing the form of speech. So in the original, we had verbs, maintaining, and developing. And in the paraphrase version, we're using nouns, the maintenance of and the development of. We've also got quite a few synonyms here, and that's marked in purple. So we have positive attitudes and a good synonym, favorable mindsets. Uh, another synonym in the original major educational goal, and in the paraphrase version, significant objective in education. Uh, one more synonym in addition to, in the original, change to on top of, in the paraphrase version. Sometimes you might also change the grammatical constructions. So in the original, we have a to, to construction at the end. And in the, in the paraphrase version, we've added a subject. So that's another thing you can do when you're paraphrasing. The yellow text is the text that, that's similar in both 
versions. If you want some more practice doing this, I would suggest um, the book Academic Writing for Graduate Students by Swales and Feek. They're kind of the gurus of academic writing. And in chapter five, uh, they have a bit on paraphrasing and they, they have a slightly different focus. They say, first identify the main points, identify the relationships. And once you've got that, like cause and effect, then you can identify linking phrases and expressions that might be appropriate, such as therefore and because. And you could also identify verbs that might establish those same relationships, like caused by or can be attributed to, and synonyms. OK, so that was paraphrasing, and now on to quoting. The first question is, when should you quote directly? Well, you should quote directly when the quote is central to the argument that you're making, and when you want to discuss what somebody said and provide that author's exact position. You can also choose a direct quotation if that exact quote of the authority would give credibility to and support your own ideas, or if it's important to convey the language and the nuance of the quote of the original. The thing you want to watch out for, the pitfall, is assuming that the quotations speak for themselves. So what I advise, and what many other people in the field advise, is that you think of quotation sandwiches. So you've got three parts when you use a direct quotation. First, you've got the bun on top, and that's introducing the quotation. Then you've got the quotation itself, which is the meat or the tofu if you're vegetarian. And then you've got the bun on the bottom, which is explaining the quotation, explaining what it means. Um, so if you don't have all three parts, then you're, you're, you have what we call a hit and run quotation and you don't want to be a hit and run quoter. To help you with that um, are these templates at the end of they say, I say. And if you have these in front of you, it can really help you to have all three parts that you need when you're framing your quotation, the introduction, the quotation, and the following up and explaining. There's some other um, phrasing that you might like to check out on Manchester Academic Phrase Bank as well. Here's a sample. We see in red the introduction, and in um, red also the follow-up to the quote here. But we can see it's very general. The introduction is very general, and the follow-up doesn't explain the quotation. So to revise this and make it better, we can set up the quote with more background, and we can add a sentence to explain what the author here, Bordeaux, is saying and, and do, doing that in your own words. It's also good to use verbs that reflect the spirit of the quoted passage. So not just general verbs like writes or says, but here we could use really specific verbs like is alarmed that or disturbed by or complains. Here's a list of verbs that you might use to reflect the spirit of the quoted passage. And this is the revised text. And we can see the green is introduction to the quotation. It's longer. Uh, it provides more background, and then the blue after the quotation explains the quotation. Bordeaux's point is that the, and then he continues. Because for the reader, it's not always clear what the quote means. It might be clear to you because you've spent a long time working with the text, reading the text, but the reader needs that follow-up before you go on to explain the relevance for your own ideas. So you're quoting what they say, and then you connect that to what you say. OK, the final point is about citing. When should you cite? So if it's not your idea and not common knowledge, then cite the source. Even if the author's sentiment is similar to your own, still cite. If it's different, cite. Facts and statistics, figures, cite. And you'll need to use citations no matter if you paraphrase or if you use direct quotations. How do I cite? Well you need to um, have be following a certain citation style. Many of you already do this. If you don't yet, it would be good to ask your supervisor or your professor which style you should be using. Common styles are APA style, MLA style, and Chicago style. Another place you can check is this overview of citation styles 
or guide to citing in the disciplines from Purdue Online Writing Lab, or OWL, and it will give a list of common style guides for, the, for various disciplines. Okay, and then at the language clinic, when I'm doing writing consultations, I, there's some frequently asked questions. So I thought the last thing we would do would be to look at two of these frequently asked questions. Um, the first is, what do I do if, how do I cite a source or a reference within a secondary source? So if the secondary source I'm reading cites another source, how do I cite that? First a piece of advice is try to find the primary source Read it for yourself so you can see the context. That's the best. But if you can't access it, then you can cite the source, secondary source instead like this. The example here. The work of Qi, as cited in Lazar, 2006, and then continue on. The second frequently asked question is, what do I do if I'm citing the same source multiple times in one paragraph? Well. If you put a, a citation after every sentence, it would look a little bit um, just awkward and kind of break the flow of your writing up. Um, but if you leave out the citation, then you are risking plagiarism. So what do you do? Um, most style guides suggest introducing the source early in the paragraph and have the author be part of the sentence. So the subject here, for example, Lazar describes. Da, 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 da. And then the second sentence, you could refer back to the author by the, a pronoun, for example, he, he notes. And the third sentence, you might use his name again. Lazar also found that. And, and then um, wrap, wrap it up. So making sure to make it very clear which ideas are your own and which ideas came from another scholar or another writer. And that way it's clear to the reader in a paragraph like this that all of the ideas came from the same source. There's no risk of plagiarism and your paragraph um, also will flows well. Thank you for your time. I hope that these tips on uh, paraphrasing, quoting, and citing will help you when you are writing and working with secondary sources in your work. <laughs>